Welcome to the show, pre-recorded for the meeting which takes place at Fairview and we have Grant Paddock on the line. Good morning Grant, how are you doing and how's the weather your side of the woods? Morning Sheldon, morning punters, yeah the weather's terrible, one of those typical Port Elizabeth days, cold, rainy, windy. But I believe it's going to get better for tomorrow's racing. A light headwind of about 15 k's an hour, so it's not really going to play a game. And uh, hopefully we can get the punters off to a good start to the to the weekend. Right, talking about a good start, it's a very early start. 11.30, the first race being a nine race program. And I see they've priced up the Justin Snaith inmate number 11, Greenlight Dancer, 55 and a half kilograms, the filly taking on the boys from the two draw. Do you believe that she is the horse they have to beat? Um, Sheldon, listen, she has, she doesn't have to beat too much here, to be very honest with you. Very, very shallow field. There's a couple of Cape Town horses in here, Bright Future and Mitradat. Greenlight Dancer got the jockey, got the draw, got the weight. Um, the big question marks, obviously, first time, Polly. You know, Justin travels his horses very well. They are they're fit and ready to race, but the Polly track is the question mark. Never been around the right-hand turn on the Polly, so that is a question mark. And from a, from a good draw like that, if you give up your position, you're in big trouble. You're going to be eating Polly. So, um, yeah, they normally come and win here, uh, Justin, uh, Justin's horses. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. I have tipped it to win. I do like the horse Potent Captain back in trip with Chase up from a half-decent draw of six. Hot Hat Hat has got to be there and thereabouts. I think he worked himself up a little bit too much last time out before the race and ran his race early. And then this horse, Man of Courage. I'll be, keep an eye on this horse. I'm, I'm sure in the next one or two rounds, this horse is going to be in the winner's box. Uh, they got Charlie back on from a from a one draw, slight step up in trip. Got to be back end of quartet kind of horse. I'm tipping at 11, 2, 1 and 7, Sheldon. As we move along to race number two, and in the second race at the early time of recording, Scratched is number two. So take out number two. And just looking at the betting, number three, Sweet Cake, the Gavin Smith Stable and Craig Zaki, the three-year-old Bay Philly. Around about four and five to ten. Number five, Audacious, is three to one. And then number four, Million Reasons, from around seven to two, has gone out nine to two and five to one. Yeah, 100% Sheldon. Million Rees is going to need to run back from a holiday. Um, Sweet Cake, on the other hand, not going to find an easier field to win her maiden in. Listen, they, they, they're not going to Hollywood, let me tell you that. I can tell you that right now. A very, very weak field. Um, Lady Thea is the improver here, probably, as well as Audacious. Audacious pulled very hard last time out, and I've got a feeling Rich is going to jump and run with this filly and try and get away from Sweet Cake. Sweet Cake's a, quite a one-paced horse. Um, I wouldn't be running around taking 4 to 10 on Sweet Cake, I must be honest with you. Probably will win a race like this, but um, this is the exact of the day, 3 from 3 and 5. And then a um, million reasons and probably um, uh, got your both filling up the, the quartets. But uh, yeah, Sweet Cake's race it should be. Moving along to race number 3, and here yeah, we have Richard Perry and Alan Kreef. No surprises at the top of the boards. Number 1, Travel Master at 18 to 10. Number two, Ravelous from five to one down four to one. So that's the early money. No scratchings at the early time of recording. Let's kick off with number one, Travel Master, and then you can touch on number two, Ravelous, that early money. Yeah, very good run last time out by um, Travel Master. He went to the front, they got grabbed very late, back in, back a furlong to the 1200. Similar tactics are probably going to be taken up, and um, it's got to be a very, very big runner with Richard in the saddle. Ravelous, the three year old young horse, um, he had, had quite a bit of racing, 61 and a half. He only rode him last time out, he jumps back aboard, which is always a positive, and he's riding super well at the moment. He's got to be there and thereabouts, no doubt. And um, then Charlie Malone holding decent form and Magic Prince. A very good last run. Um, an open kind of a race, this, um, the race three. But uh, this was uh, Travel Master, Charlie Malone and Magic Prince should get you through the place accumulator. And I'm going for Travel Master to win it. Right, just looking at Travel Master, 62 kilograms. But when you look at the structuring of the weights, I think the first seven runners that are in single figures, they're from 62 kilograms down to 58. So the weight shouldn't play too much of a role in race number three. 
Heading along to race number four, where number six, On My Honor, is your eight to ten favorite. Number one, Jack in the Green, currently at 28 to 10. And then number seven, Amazing Colors, is at nine to two. Just having a look, I think number three, Braden Bay, is scratched. Yes, number three, Braden Bay, is the early casualty. Will you be going head on with the favorite, On My Honor, or are you thinking the eight to 10 might just be a little bit sharp? Yeah, way too sharp uh, once again. Just won a maiden, Cape Town. Could be anything, to be very honest with you. Um, but it's not easy coming right-hand turn, poly track first time. Uh, you know, you've got to be very, very advanced. The horse has only had two runs. It's having its third run now and travelling. Uh, I'm very much in the camp of amazing colours. Uh, the filly is super well in 11 points at, um, to, the, to the, re the next best horse on the best weighted. Uh, she's holding a very good run in a graduation plate again, stronger last time out and um, I think 92 is super good value. I really think she's a massive runner. Two horses in the pick six only, seven and six. Um, then the likes of Spec Magic and Jack in the Green, but they got a lot to do at the weight. So yeah, seven and six in the pick six, seven and six will sort your place accumulator out. And I'm in the camp of amazing colors to beat on my honor, Spec Magic and Jack in the Green. So there we go, a little bit of value there at 9 to 2. And there could be fireworks and some amazing colours if this daughter comes through. This filly, Luim Kotwa from the Sharon Cotson stable, 9 to 2 could just be the value. The odds on favoured at 8 to 10 on my honour. Going to have to step up and show exactly what he is worth. As we move on to race number 5, and number 5, Mast Vigilante is 15 to 10. Number eight, William the First at five to two, and then number one, Donny T at nine to two. Now, when you are on Mast Vigilante, you are very strong on this individual, and the Richard Ferry, Alan Griff, that train just continues to roll. Yeah, it rolls. Sometimes it rolls across your head as well. But um, Mars Vigilante, good win last time out, but um, he had to pull out all the stops. It was a very, very hard ride to get him over the line seven days ago. These are definitely stronger horses. Uh, he's going to have to up his game, no doubt. William the first, very, very good poly form, good draw, good running weight, 54 and a half. I think he's the, the big runner in this race. The likes of Donny T, Tuscan Gold, solid form lines. And then this was Cool Winter, very very, very good run last time out and with Louis up it's going to be a completely different kettle of fish here and uh, he's a massive runner as well um, I'm going 8-5-1-2 in the pick 6 you need to add the 3 in cool winter I do think William first might just hold this field on to race number 6 and just looking at race number 6 14-25 is the carded off time 18 to 10 about number 4 Guerra Number two is at 33 to 10. Number five, Silver Tycoon, nine to two. And then we go out six to one and better the rest. Now Grant, this horse number two, I'm gonna get you to pronounce it. Usually when these horses come with these names, they come for the commentator and the presenters and they end up winning. What do you make of number two from the Gavin Smith stable? Uh, best bet on the card, yeah, Sheldon. I, I have Jala Jockel. It's an ice cap in Iceland, also commonly known as E15. So for the commentators, probably E15 will be a better call. Um, best bet on the card for me, very good value at 33 to 10. She was very, very unlucky last time. I didn't get the best of rights from the saddle. And... Uh, down in class, down to a, a 78 from an 80 odd. Um, I, I think this is the best bet on the card. Uh, Guerra to chase at home with the likes of Graduation Time and Silver Tycoon. But uh, this horse is going to be very, very hard to be, Sheldon. So there we go. The horse with the special name, number two, is going to look to freeze this field. And at 33 to 10, as you heard from Grant, the value's there. And I think race time, this horse is going to shorten right down in the betting market. As we move along to race number seven, where they are betting two to one the field. Number two, Happy Holly, who runs in the red and black silks. Calvin Abib for Gavin Smith at two to one. Then we have number 10 at 5 to 2, number 5 you win again at 7 to 2, and number 1 red sash 5 to 1. Grant, there's only a quartet of runners that are in single figures. We then go out to 14 to 1 and better the rest. How do you decipher race number 7 in numerical order? Who would be your top 2 or 3 selections? 
Sheldon, this filly from a Justin Snaith yard with a good draw and a bottom, a nice bottom weight of 54 kilos with the Enya, very good post maiden. She could be absolutely anything. She's running off an 86 with a nice weight on her back. Um, she takes to the surface. She's got to be a massive runner. Number one, Red Sash, loves course and distance. Unfortunately, she's not a big filly. 62 kilos might catch her out, but she's very, very honest. Uh, she'll, she'll give you a very good run for her money. You win again. One of her last couple coming back from a bit of a break. If she doesn't need it, she's going to be there and thereabouts. And Cobb and Capi won a very good race when they when they gave the, gave the race to her with the apprentice on, and she led all the way over a sprint. She's stepping up back up to fourteen hundred meters, which I actually think is a better option for her, to be honest with you. And then Happy Holly coming back from a two month break uh, from Durban, sixty one and a half. We saw what happened to Splash the main brace last week, and. Um, this filly used to run behind Splash the main brace, so uh, she's got to be there and thereabouts. I'm sure Gavin will have some meat left on the bone there for later features coming up. But uh, if the Justice Nathos takes to the poly, I think it'll be hard to beat Sheldon. 10, 1, 5 and 6, and in the pick 6 you need to add the 2. That'll take us along to race number 8, and just looking at the device, the Nelson Mandela Bay Racing 1400. EC Poly Challenge, non-black type, and this will be run over 1,400 meters. Now, looking at the field, there's some competitive runners here, and let's start off, where are we going to start? Number three, King Region is drawn out a little bit deep, but here's a horse who comes with some tremendous form. Yeah, he's got the form. He's been on a track. He won absolutely easily last time out there. In a, in a, in a race that was short of his best, he'll be absolutely... Much better suited to the 1400. Uh, nine draw, question mark. Last time he won from a three draw where they could put him where he wanted to be. He's going to have to do a bit of work. We jump on the turn on the 1400 meters, so it's not going to be easy for those horses drawn out wide. But he has got a bit of gate speed, and uh, he should beat this field again, there's no doubt. My value bet in the day, the source number five, Prince of Fire. He was drawn out at 13 last time out. Ran on very strongly, finished in 22 seconds. Stable says he's doing very, very well back home. With an eight draw, slightly better. Sunday is riding on the top of his game, and he'll be running on very hard at the at the at the death. And I can't see him missing the first three. You got the likes of Silver Falcon and Silver Falcon drawn out at eleven. It's not going to be easy, but he's been around the Durbanville tight track, so um, maybe the poly will be okay for him. And then Kaya's hope coming back from a break. Um, last time 1400 on the poly he won quite well so a nice and strong race as it should be they've got the Philly Luna Halo there as well I'm tipping at 3, 5, 9 and 1 um, those horses should get you through the pick 6 Sheldon Right, moving on to race number 9 to bring down the curtain on the card and just giving some stats for the punters out there looking at the last 230 races the majority of wins have come from draw number 1 so let's have a look here draw number 1 that is Flower Festival in search of the hat trick a little bit more to do but a horse who just seems to be improving at a rate of knots yeah, well, I think the stats are spot on. It's my, it's my first pick. I think the Sharon Cotton yard holds all the aces. Yeah, I know uh, such of such of life is the is the stable jock is on um, three year old carrying sixty kilos, but she loves the poly track. So such a life is definitely got again. Uh, my preference is definitely for Flower Festival. She's won two good races. She looked phenomenally well last time out and won accordingly. Horses like Jumbo Sana, Green Fame has improved a little bit since it's maiden, and she'd have to. So um, I think she they got to go in as well so i'm tipping at five two ten and six um sheldon i, I really do think the cots and yard hold all the aces in this one well there you go in an open looking contest grant's going with five two ten and six so those will be his numbers for race number nine and now grant we're going to bring up your suggested bet for the day so for all your followers out there if you wouldn't mind just running through your suggested bets Thank you, Sheldon. Best bet, race six, number two, AF, Jalla Jockle. Value bet, race eight, number five, Prince of Fire. And the suggested bet, the place accumulator goes as follows. We're going to open up with one, five, and six, by six and seven, by five and eight, by banker two, by one, five, ten, by three, five, nine, by two and five, for 216 rand. Excellent. Thank you very much, Grant, as is the norm. Thanks very much for your input, and hopefully the horses do it for us on the poly. Thank you very much, Sheldon, and good luck to those punters tomorrow. Goodbye.
Thanks very much to Grant Paddock joining us on the line. He's usually spot on when it comes to his selections. He's got his ear very close to the ground and he's given you the low down and the run down, the high down, the high up, the low down and everything involved. And hopefully the horses will come to the fore and you'll be in the winner's enclosure.